Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're talking all about fleece. Now I'm sure you've noticed a lot of it in my cage and it is increasingly becoming a popular bedding option for guinea pig owners across the world. But it does get mixed reviews, some of which I think stem from misusing it. So in this video I'm going to explain the benefits of fleece and how to properly use it to ensure it's working correctly for you as well as tips along the way to help keep your piggy cage looking nice and clean for longer. And whilst freshly swept up fleece looks very nice and pleasing to the eye, I'm going to be honest in this video and show you how dirty my cage really gets and the level of cleaning it really needs. So this is the cage after 12 hours of no cleaning whatsoever. I've been resisting it and yes, there's a lot of poops, but it's a manageable amount. I would normally have swept up at some point earlier today, but we are due a full change of the liner. So what better way to explain what fleece is all about whilst getting this cage clean. Now I don't know who first started using fleece as a guinea pig bedding, but whoever it was worked out that fleece has some specific properties. Crucially, its ability to wick liquids through it. This is different from soaking liquids up. Wicking means moisture passes right through the fleece into an absorbent layer below, meaning the top of the fleece stays dry. And this is how other products like Vet Bed work. Any fleece that is 100% polyester will be able to work this way, as long as it's not being coated with something that makes it repel water. More on that later. Now there's a lot of reasons in favour of fleece, but my personal reasons for using it boil down to cage size and the way it looks. So if you imagine this cage, which by the way is 75 centimetres wide by 2 metres long, I do get asked that a lot. If you imagine it all covered in newspaper and hay, or all wood shavings, or all paper-based bedding, it's just not economical for me to replace so much area every single single week or every other week. I already produce a lot of waste from daily cleaning of their litter tray, so I dread to think how much my bin would be overflowing if I use natural bedding across the whole of this cage. And it's worth pointing out here that a large cage is essential and there's no way I'm compromising on that. Fleece liners are reusable and washable, so they solve that problem. And in my experience, they do last many years. My own liners, which I made myself, are six years old and still going strong. Now the other reason for me is that guinea pigs genuinely enjoy the fleece and it also looks aesthetically nice. And obviously that's my own opinion, you might think differently and that's fine. Having said that, I don't think we should be totally abandoning natural bedding. For starters, hay is a very very important part of our guinea pigs diet and they need access to it 24-7. Hay is also a great enrichment, so that's why I always use this chunky underbed storage box in my cage to give my guinea pigs access access to plenty of fresh hay and this is just lined with newspaper. I'm not saying that newspaper is the best thing here and I probably am stuck in my ways a bit but for us it works well and I can also get my hands on it free of charge which is a big bonus. So those are my main reasons for using fleece, but there are a host of others. So for starters, wood shavings and other natural beddings can be kicked out of the cage easier by our naughty piggies and cause mess around the house. However, as you well know from my videos, hay also does this and we can't not give our guinea pigs hay. There is an argument that fleece could be more sustainable. However, it is polyester, so there are some concerns around microplastics and the continued use of detergents when washing it. But ultimately, fleece Fleece is a product we use again and again, whilst with the other products we need to buy them new every time. And because of this, a big advantage is lower costs. Although you might have more startup costs with fleece, especially if you purchase very well made, quite expensive fleece liners, which you don't have to do by the way, we will cover that later. Either way though, over time you will be saving money with fleece. That has to be the most satisfying bit right there, just popping in the new liner so easy and quick. Next up, some more natural beddings can be quite dusty and there are concerns around respiratory problems. Now this is something I've never experienced with keeping my piggies on fleece. And as we mentioned earlier, and if used correctly, fleece works to wick away moisture from the surface, preventing our piggies from sitting in one damp spot for too long and potentially reducing the chance of infections such as bumblefoot and urinary tract infections. 
Now, like anything, it can't all be good. There are some potential downsides of using fleece, and one I hear about a lot is burrowing piggies. Naughty! This is when certain piggies dig under and constantly mess up their fleece. Now, I've never had this happen myself, but I do wonder that if you inadvertently give them the idea of getting under the fleece, they might develop the habit of doing it once they work it out for themselves. So be careful when you're cleaning and changing out the liners and make sure you don't encourage it. You can also get liners that come up and over the side of the cage and then you can use clips to hold them down to prevent any naughty piggies digging at it. Secondly is smell. Again, I've not noticed this myself and in my opinion, smells originate from not cleaning up poops and pee often enough or not taking out the poop bag as I call it. You lot, can't all get in there at once. <laughs> So much drama. If I'm honest, the liners can have a very faint aroma of ammonia if I really sniff at them. So perhaps different fleeces respond in different ways and people could be different in their sensitivity to it. Some say that adding vinegar to the wash cycle helps or washing for longer or at a higher temperature. Thirdly, obviously your washing machine is going to get more use. However, I don't think that washing my piggy bedding has shortened the life of any machines I've used, which by the way is only two and the first one died because of electrical problems. You should however be using pillowcases or wash bags to keep hair and hay from getting clogged up in the machine and also from sticking to other things you wash like clothes and towels. And related to this is that some people don't like that hair can remain on the fleece and also little bits of hay can get stuck in it. Now personally this doesn't bother me and I don't think the cage looks any messier and you can limit the hair by shaking the fleece before washing or using a rubber brush, vacuum or lint roller. Also go for fleece which is smooth and flat with a low pile. On to the key question, which is how to use fleece properly. And it's really important to understand that it's not just about fleece itself. It must be used with an absorbent layer underneath it to be effective at wicking away moisture. Also, you can have a waterproof layer on the bottom, but it's not essential as long as your cage is mostly watertight. That absorbent material then, it can be something as simple as old towels that you put down first before laying your fleece throw on top, or it might be a mattress protector which you can sew to the fleece and in specially made liners, you might find they use materials like terry toweling or zorb. And this is why you don't always have to pay a lot of money to try fleece. I used to use towels with cheap fleece throws tucked under them for many years before I finally made my own liners. Nowadays, my liners are made out of a fleece throw cut to size, a polyester mattress protector and a waterproof mattress protector. One of those types with a fused layer of terry toweling. The Amazon storefront links below have some updated examples of exactly the kind of product I bought to make my liners with. And I'll also pop links down in the description to my tutorial videos for how to make liners and waterproof pads. Some people experience a problem with their fleece not wicking in the very beginning, which seems to be more of a US thing as here in the UK all the fleece throws I've bought from places like Primark and B&M have been just fine. It usually takes a few washes for the fleece to start wicking if it doesn't already when you buy it. So that's how to get fleece liners to work, but what should you expect in terms of washing them? Well, ideally, we don't want to be washing big liners every few days. So my system to get around this is to use a litter tray and pee pads. And I know what you're thinking here. <laughs> pee pads. Isn't that just putting more fleece on top of fleece? Well, yes, but they do make keeping the cage clean much easier. This is because guinea pigs usually toilet in specific areas and you don't want to be stuck washing the whole liner just because a few select areas get really dirty and peed on lots. I find it easier to use waterproof pads in these hot spots and change them out every two or three days when I see they are getting dirty. Okay, it's day two after changing the liner and some of these pads are starting to look a bit dirty, especially in popular places like underneath the hammock. So these ones come out and get replaced by fresh new ones. Ultimately, they are easier to wash and replace with clean ones rather than changing the whole liner. And I said I would be honest, it means I only actually change out and wash my full liner once every two and a half weeks, which goes to show how effective the pads are. But the other thing that helps me do this is the litter tray. As I said, it gives my piggies somewhere to enjoy their 
loose hay in a more natural setting, and as a result, they also do a lot of their toileting in there. So, of course, the question I get all the time is, what about them peeing on the hay that they're eating? Isn't it unhygienic and unhealthy? Well, no, because this litter tray is cleaned out every single day and topped up throughout the day. I've never had any health problems in my piggies that I've linked to the litter tray. They poop in their food bowl, they pee when they're out on the lawn, they make a bed out of their cage mate's poops. You get the idea. Our piggies will pick around soiled food, so as long as we take measures to keep things as hygienic as possible, it's fine for them. A few people have asked me to recommend pre-made liners. Now, because I've made my own liners, I haven't tested that many. Although I have used the paw inspired liners before for floor time and lap time, and they seem nice and easy to sweep. Although I have seen reviews that they can go weird and hard after being washed a lot. The Guinea Dad liners are very popular and always get good reviews, and the Cavi liners are extremely thick and cozy looking. I'm gonna add these and some other recommended ones to my Amazon storefront. Again, the links are down in the description below. So that's the lowdown on fleece. I hope you found this video useful guys and do leave a comment below. Let me know what your preferred bedding is and whether you're a fan of fleece or not. Thanks so much for watching everyone and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye!